little background on this webinar. We came up with this essentially because if you've ever worked with the WD.EMV file, the environment file for AutoCAD Electrical, it can be difficult to understand. And if you don't visit it every so often, you know, you can forget what it can do, basically. So like if you're not in it every day, I mean, there'll be times when I need to adjust the environment file and it's like, uh oh, what controls that? You know, you just, if you're not in it every day, you know, that can make it even worse sometimes. So the main reason why we came up with this was to, you know, simply help. We don't, we don't teach you the environment file itself. We make it easier to select paths because that's what the environment file ultimately does. Like it states right here. It's a text file that contains settings and paths that direct the software to look for certain files and actions. And we use it when you're in a multi-user environment. You've got multiple people using the software. You don't want everybody to have their own catalog database on your own hard drive or your footprint database or template files or you know default sim symbol locations you know you should be pointing to a shared network drive for that information so if i <clears throat> if anybody adds a new catalog number to the parts database it's immediately available to everybody custom symbols you create your own custom symbols they should go in your own custom symbol folder up on a shared network drive you don't want everybody sharing, you know, creating their own custom symbols, storing them locally. And this is why they have the environment file, the text file in the first place, is so we can share certain paths in certain files when you're in a multi-user environment. And like I just said, it's it's critical when you have multi-users using the software. And the problem, you know, always was, not a huge problem, but, you know, the environment file itself, the text file, can be difficult to understand, plain and simple. Everybody in this webinar right now is a smart, smart person, your designers, your engineers. It can still be just difficult to interpret what is in that text file sometimes. And this is why we came up with this in the first place. There's no wizard or GUI to assist in understanding the different variables, the different paths, the editing variables. And that's why we came up with this app in the first place, just to make it a little bit easier. This is just a glimpse of what I'm gonna show you here in about two minutes. This is what the environment app looks like. And we broke it up. We took the environment file and broke it up into certain categories to help it make it a little bit easier to use or modify as well. And that's all we're doing through this. We're modifying the text file. We're browsing to paths. Instead of going out to Windows Explorer figuring out the path that you need to redirect something to, typing it into the text file at that standpoint, or at the very least, a copy and paste from Windows Explorer. And, and here, you pick the category you want, and I'm gonna give you some examples of certain categories. I'm literally gonna change the environment file right now, but we made it easier just to browse to the path through shared network folder to modify the environment file, the text file itself. <coughs> Excuse me. Fighting a little cold here. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna start in on a demo right now. And if you do have questions during 
the webinar, go ahead and post them. That's why we have Julia on the line as well. She was a big part of developing this. So let me close that down. And when you first install this app, you're gonna see five shortcuts on my desktop here. The two big ones are the app itself right here and the license manager. When you do order the software from Hagerman, it'll get delivered with the Hagerman license manager because it needs that to operate and the actual executable for the app itself. This is what I'm gonna change in a few minutes here when I demonstrate the product. This is part of setting up your license manager. And when you do receive the software, we have several sets of instructions on how to install it. And some of these other icons you see on the desktop here, like this first one, quick start. In the table contents, we got the environment file itself, the connection and help. And this is just a short document. Why do we have it? Just like the slide just said in the PowerPoint, contain settings and paths for the software to look at certain files and actions. Here's a glimpse of the app itself. And one of the one of my favorite parts actually of the app is the help menu that we put into it. Um, because the environment file can be difficult to understand, even though they claim to explain what each line is in the environment file. What we did is we created a basically help for each topic. And you're gonna see some colors in there. And in the app itself, if you see something in red, it's not supported. So don't change it. Yellow, it's rarely changed. Green, those are the ones that you change the most. But you're gonna get this doc when you install the software. We have a README, and this goes into detail especially on the installation side. You know, there's prerequisites that we put in here. But on the installation side, as far as the license manager is concerned, you want to follow those instructions. And part of those instructions is emailing Hagerman for your actual license, because if you don't, it'll run in a 30-day trial mode. And then the last document that we have right here, this is the big word that, you know, the, the big manual, administrator and user guide. You know, we go over the prerequisites again. We you have an intro and an overview for the installation um, steps. Installation, licensing, connection variables. So this is a very detailed document of not only installing the app, but installing the network license. And then we get into the details of the app itself, some of the different things that you can change, how to modify it installation steps so this is the big one the big document and here's where it gets into the license manager what you need to do with that and this is where you'll email us and you'll get the info and the license itself 
And you really want to pay attention when you're installing the whole license manager. Because again, if you don't set it up correctly, it's only going to work for 30 days and then you'll be calling us anyway. So pay attention to the network license manager, especially on this part of the document. <laughs> and if those anybody out there that's never messed with the environment file itself, you know, this is what it looks like. And again, it can just be difficult to understand and edit from here. Like as an example in the demonstration, I'm going to take the parts database and I'm going to point it to a replicated shared network drive. I'm going to take some of these variables that you see here, like the W block and inserting of circuits. I'm going to change those to a replicated shared network drive in the app. And you'll be able to see the differences. So instead of doing it, and this is what we're doing, instead of modifying the environment file directly from the text file, we're going to browse in where it says X some path, just to make it a little bit easier. And as an example, right now in the software, let's see here, hold on just a second. Yeah. So in the software, when I go to the project tab up top and I pick this config catalog database, right now it's pointing to the default when I installed the software for both the catalog database and the footprint database. If I want to insert a W block circuit, the default path that it goes to right now, again, is from when I installed the software. And this should point directly to a custom circuit folder up on a shared network drive. Currently, it does not. So you're browsing all day long. Also, when you use the icon menu, when I use the icon menu, if I want to save a circuit to an icon menu as an example, and a lot of you might know this already, but if I go to save circuit to icon menu, and from here, if I go to add new circuit, I'll give it a name and I'll just call this XF MR underscore turn my caps on here. When I create the image file for it, Right now, it's defaulting to the folder when I installed the software. I don't even have a browse feature here where I could, you know, navigate to the folder where I want to store it. And then, especially the block that it's going to create. If I were to create the circuit right now, it's going to default to this folder. So I pick OK here. I'll pick a base point. And then I'll just grab some of these symbols just for a quick circuit here. Could be anything. So 
So this is pointing to my local drive. I don't want that. I want it to go to my shared network drive. So I'm talking parts database right now, circuits in a symbol as well. If I want to create a custom symbol, I'm not going to go through creating a symbol. I'm going to creating the whole symbol, if you will. Whoop. I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm not going to put all the attributes down, but my main point is I'm going to default to your own custom symbol folder. So if you go to your symbol builder and you create a symbol, And let's say it was a breaker. And hypothetically speaking, obviously I would normally, you know, insert all my attributes, connection points, just like you normally would. I'm going to pick done right now as if I were done with the symbol. And right now the default path to save this in once again is from when I originally installed the software and it goes to the JIC or the NFPA folders. We want this default, to, even though you could browse to your custom folder on a shared network drive, you want it to default to that. So you don't have to constantly browse. So having said all that, <clears throat> I'm going to exit the software and I'm going to open up the app. And it says it's opening up my default one or it opens this by default. If your environment file is stored somewhere else, it's just a matter of file. Open. I usually do this no matter what, just to make sure I've got the right one. And this is the default location. So here's the environment file that I actually want to modify. And that's the other thing you can do. You can open up environment files, save them as a different name, before you modify the environment file, whether you're using our you know, connection app or not, always, always, always make a backup, make a couple of backups of the environment file. Because if you make a mistake, it can really do some, it can make finding the mistake frustrating back in the software. So always make a backup, just in case you have to go back to get your work done and then revisit the environment file to fix what you might have made a mistake in. But I'm going to go to catalogs. Here's the default path in the environment file. I'm going to browse. And I'm just replicating the shared network folder right here. So I'll pick catalogs not the default location. And what I remember I mentioned before, what I especially, one of the best things I think about this app, you know, we don't advertise it. We don't teach you how to use the actual environment file itself. But if I pick my help right now, it'll open up a nice PDF file. There's the green color I was mentioning earlier that relates back to that other document. But this tells me exactly what's gonna happen when I make a change, in this case, to the catalog data, or to the, all the databases, basically. It's not just the parts database. When I go to what I'm gonna change right now, symbols and libraries.
when you pick each one of these categories and again, pick help, you know, a lot of it also consists of screenshots. So we're telling you right here, hey, if you make a change to the circuit builder path, this is what it's going to affect in the software itself. So you can, you can, we don't advertise it. We don't, you know, we don't support, you know, we don't teach you how all every line item in the environment file, but in reality, you can get pretty well educated on the environment file and all the paths itself just by using the help menu that we provide. This is one of the things I'm gonna change right now. Like I you just saw in the software, you create a symbol, you want the default folder to point to your own shared network drive. We spell it right out in an explanation and screenshots. So like I said, that's one of my favorite features of this app itself. So right now, I'm going to disable the variable and what that means, and you'll figure that out when you read the documents that we send along with it. Essentially, you clear the asterisk. The asterisk is in here because right now this is commented out. So I'm going to uncheck here, and then I'm going to browse my custom symbol folder. Again, theoretically, that would be on a shared network drive. I happen to put it right here, and I'll pick the symbols folder. And then I talked about circuits. I'll disable the variable, and once again, browse in my own custom circuit folder. And then I'll do one more. Where's my other circuit one? Circuit builder. User circuit path. Disable that one and browse in the same custom circuit folder. So essentially, change the default path of the parts database, change the default paths for not only inserting but creating circuits, and change the default path. So when I create a symbol, it's going to go directly to my custom circuit folder. So now I can I'm going to save this file. And even though another nice feature of this, even though we strongly suggest that you create a backup, one nice thing about the software is, or about this app, is it will create a backup for you, a BAK file. So it's like you got an extra one. So now when I go back into the software, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know what happened there. Hold on just a second. So 
something happen. But, oh, okay. Not that. This. Give me two seconds here. Ah, uh, hold on. Little technical difficulty here. Look at this file. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about this. What is going on in the background here? Let me try this. Okay, I think I'm good at this point. Let's try opening this up again. That's better. All right. So let me open up this file. And now if I go to my project tab up top, and I go to the catalog config, now you can see that it's pointing to my make-believe shared network drive. If I create another circuit, go to schematic, save the circuit to the icon menu, Freaking mouse is driving me crazy here. Let's try this. Oh, now move. So now if I go to add new, and I'll call this XF. MR underscore two image file XF MR 
underscore two, notice where it's going to save the PNG and where it's going to save the actual block if I were to create the circuit itself. So if I were to call it XF MR underscore two again, now it's going to save it to this location because if, if you recall when I was first doing this, um, it doesn't even give you an opportunity to browse, just like right now. You can't browse to a preferred folder. So now if I pick OK, and again, I'll just pick some symbols here to represent a circuit. Pick OK. Now if I were to go to Insert Saved Circuit, here it is, but it's saved in my custom circuit folder. If I were to go to the insert W block circuit, it goes directly to my custom circuit folder up on a shared network drive. And then the last one that I talked about was creating a symbol. Throw some graphics on here. No, it doesn't matter. I'm going to cancel out of it anyway. But if I go to my symbol builder, and this is a big one here, and it's a popular one. This doesn't really matter. I'll just leave that on generic. Insult all my attributes, pick done. Now it's defaulting to my own custom symbol folder. So we're making the changes in the app instead of opening it up in Notepad, is all we're doing. We open, we open it up, and we change them from here, instead of changing them by opening up the text file itself in Notepad. We just feel that it makes it a little bit easier to make those changes from the app then opening up the text file itself. And like I said, it's not part of the deal that we educate you on every single line item that the environment file can control. That ultimately is up to you. But as I said, you could use this to educate yourself through the help menus because we do a good job of explaining with you know screenshots what's going to happen when you change a certain line item in the environment file itself sorry i forgot to close my email out during the webinar so that's our electric electrical connection i apologize for the brief technical difficulties I was having, but that's what the electrical connection app is all about. Is there any questions? Yep, we do have a few. Um, the first question is, what does the app cost? Um, it is uh, $295. You really only need one license of this. Typically, it's either your power user, your CAD manager, whomever that would do that. And we also supply the support to get that installed. Uh, ne next question. Um, will there be a recording? Yes, we record all of our uh, webcast webinars. You'll be sent an email tomorrow, as Ashley said, with a link to rewatch re it if you couldn't watch the whole thing. Um, or send it off to other people. 
uh, it, we, it's also always um, posted up to Hagerman.com. Let's see. Uh, next, uh, Kenneth wanted to know, does this software package help with migration issues, such as going from 2022 to 2024? I'm not sure exactly what issues in migration we're talking about, um, but it certainly will, would help on, uh, again, the catalog, the PaaS, and any of those types of standards. Is that correct, Greg? Yeah, it's, it's not going to touch any migration issues. It all, it, the only thing it's going to do is, you know, when you do migrate, let's say, the parts database, you have to pick the old folder versus the new folder. So if you've already changed it in the environment file, you know, just make sure you're pointing to the right folders. But the environment file, as far as AutoCAD Electrical is concerned, got nothing to do with the actual migration of anything. Unless you migrate, okay. you migrate your environment file too. Obviously it would take care of that, but not, you know, not anything else that you can migrate from one to the other. Okay, that makes sense. Um, next question, uh, once the environment file has been updated, can this be cloned to all users or become part of the installation and or deployment? Uh, so the answer is yes. Um, we, we've seen it done both ways. We've seen it where the environment file is packaged as part of a deployment image that you know, some some companies have like a software center or, a, you know, a deployment center where that environment file can absolutely be packaged as part of that. Um, then the other thing, too, is you can also send it out to users. It's not going to be, audit, that's not going to be automatic. Or uh, send, tell, tell users where on the network that specific environment file um, is done. But we've absolutely done it as part of, um, initial or post installation where it's a simple script. Um, yeah, we can. I think part of the question might be too. Can you share one? If I interpret that correctly, yes. Oh, you you can yeah. share. You, if you got five users, we think the best route to go is to share one environment file. So if you do make changes down the road, it's immediately going to apply to all. Yeah, absolute best, absolute best practice. Um, <clears throat> next question. How often does the app get updated or revisions and does that cost anything? Uh, it gets updated as Autodesk changes, which I'll be honest, is rare, if ever. Um, and it, any of those updates is part of the initial purchase price. So it's, it's, not, it's not going anywhere. Uh, and is it AutoCAD Electrical release specific? Um, no, it works all the way back into the 2010 version, amazingly enough, um, though I don't know how you could run 2010 on, on a laptop or a system these days. Uh, next question, and Ashley, I think I'm going to probably send this over to you, but I pretty much know. Does Hagerman have a help portal or discussion group or users group online presence? You know, basically support, FAQ, bulletin board, that type of stuff. We've got the hub. Um, Ashley, do you want to kind of explain that or do we want to send that out to everybody so that they can understand what it is? We can definitely uh, send a link for that. So we do have the hub, the Hagerman hub. Um, if you go to our web website, there is a, a section for that. We also have our blog where we post um, all of these um, recordings and articles, tips and tricks from you all, but the hub is, is a little more interactive um, for people and that's for subscription um, customers. Yeah. And and I'm just going to throw this out to everybody, you know, online. Folks, we're always looking for ideas, right, for blog articles, for support FAQs. So, you know, please, you know, feel free to reach out to your account manager uh, or anybody else and say, hey, I'd love to hear about this, or, you know, could you could you write an article on a best practice um, or something like that? So that's, we, those would go to the top of our list, so to speak. Um, that's all I have. Um, one other point I just would like to make uh, is that 
you know, this environment file is something that, you know, Greg and I just unfortunately have wrangled for so many years. And, um, you know, the app is the app is definitely there to help so that you're not adding, you know, multiple directories in each person's computer under, you know, setting support paths. Um, the other thing, too, that we've seen customers, especially in an OEM situation, where perhaps you're doing projects for Tesla versus GM. Well, they neither one of them, they both make cars, but they completely have utterly different standards. So you could have multiple environment files pointing to multiple databases, multiple paths. Um, the other thing we've also seen is that if someone's got to go on the road and you're not going to be able to connect to the network, you could have a standalone ENV file. Um, and typically we, we kind of script so that you can download everything. But then that way you point back to your local drive when you're not going to be, you know, online. Um, but those are just some of the some of the use cases that we've seen. Yeah, very good That's point. All I have. Yep. Very good point about having multiple ones. Absolutely. All right. That's all we've got. Want to end it, uh, Ashley? Um, yes, thank you all for attending. Thank you, Greg and Julia, for the presentation. Um, if you do think of additional questions, you can simply reply to that confirmation or reminder email you receive from GoToWebinar, and we can get those to the right person. Uh, once again, a short survey will pop up as we close down. There is a question on there about um, topic suggestions for upcoming webcasts, and we look at those and use those um, comments in our planning. Um, also, look out for that email tomorrow, which will contain a link for the recording of today's presentation. And thank you for attending, and have a great day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks.